Apart from accidents, brain cancer is the biggest killer of children in Australia. In Adelaide, 12-year-old Erin Griffin is facing the battle of her short life against a rare and aggressive form of brain cancer. Her future may depend on a clinical trial at the Children's Hospital at Westmead in Sydney, and the results are encouraging for Erin and other sufferers. Vassal Melandris reports. She has a cheeky grin and some pretty outlandish dance moves. On the surface, Erin Griffin is a typical carefree 12-year-old who loves to entertain family and friends. However, the Adelaide youngster is masking a dark and painful illness which struck unexpectedly last year. Erin, need to take your temperature, darling. Okay. She experienced um, six, seven weeks of headaches and some vomiting. Um, we took her to the doctor. Eventually we asked for a C CT scan and the CT scan showed that she, it looked like she had a, a tumour in her brain stem. <coughs> Initially, it was thought Erin had a low-grade tumour which could be treated with chemotherapy and she remained upbeat. <laughs> it's OK because we we're, we're never there for long. But ten weeks into treatment, that's when we started seeing the, the, the symptoms. Um, she couldn't walk properly, she was falling over all the time. She had difficulty breathing at night. A biopsy revealed one of the rarest and most aggressive cancers, one which affects only 20 to 30 children in Australia each year. Diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG. Inoperable and incurable, Mum Amanda was given a prognosis by one consultant of just six to nine months. It was horrific, absolutely, absolutely horrific. His, you know, up until then, we had been hoping and thinking that, um, you know, the, the treatment she was on was going to work, you know, um, but it didn't. After two brain operations and 30 bouts of radiation therapy, Erin has exhausted all conventional treatment options. Amanda went online for answers, only to be overcome by the lack of awareness and federal funding. There's only 4% of the, the, the federal government funding goes towards um, childhood cancer research and out of that there's a really small fraction goes to brain tumour research. In fact there are hardly any funds set aside for the deadly disease DIPG. That important task is left to a handful of charities. One in particular is sponsoring a new clinical trial at Westmead Hospital. This is a gene therapy trial that we're conducting and it's the first time that gene therapy has been used in Australia for the treatment of these aggressive childhood cancers. For five days every month, the Children's Cancer Project sponsors Erin and her mum to commute from Adelaide to Sydney to undergo the radical gene replacement therapy followed by several courses of chemotherapy. Do you think you're brave going through this? How do you see yourself? Is it just something you feel you have to do? Yes. Brain tumours are hard to treat because the drugs can't get into the brain properly. And so we have to use high doses of drugs and they're very toxic to the bone marrow, causing low blood counts, anemia, infections. And that's what this trial is all about. It's a trial to introduce a gene into the bone marrow cells so that the bone marrow won't be damaged by the chemotherapy. Several months into her gruelling routine, Erin is showing signs of improvement. I felt better um, since after radiation. It's unbelievable. I, I just can't imagine how she, you know, how she copes, you know, but she does. She's so positive. And then, a few days ago, Amanda finally received some encouraging news. Our um, seven-month MRI scan, it's, uh, the tumour has shown to have shrunk by 15%. So that's just amazing news. The 15% reduction also caught the attention of oncology researchers in the United States. They've offered to fly the family to New York to see the sites and participate in a campaign to raise awareness about childhood cancers. In two weeks, health permitting, Erin will fulfil a childhood dream. I've made a shopping list and I really want to go to Tiffany's. Mum, start saving. <laughs> There's a whole host of conditions, beyond cancer even, that might be treatable with gene therapy. Blood disorders, kidney disorders, liver disorders, nerve disorders. There's about 800 children affected by paediatric brain cancer every year in Australia. 
it's actually the uh, biggest non-accidental killer of children in Australia. So my organisation has taken upon itself to, to uh, address this pitiful scenario. The Townsville father lost his daughter Amy to DIPG just 14 months after her diagnosis. He spent the next four years raising $350,000 towards research programs and advocacy work, including $30,000 for Erin. Happy birthday, dear Erin. When Erin celebrated her 12th birthday last year, doctors couldn't guarantee she'd see out her 13th. Next week, she'll become a teenager, and the family are quietly optimistic about her future. I don't know, for some reason, I just felt within my heart that she was going to go on this trial and she was going to be treated for, you know, the diagnosis of DIPG and things were going to be positive in the future.